President Muhammadu Buhari advised state governors to adopt Matawali strategy to tackle insecurity. Emir of Kano says polygamy is a cause of backwardness in northern Nigeria. An FCT high court in Meitama has convicted Miriam Sander of killing her husband, Biliamenu Belu. On business, Aviation College gets six new aircraft. On sports, basketball legend Cole Bryant killed in helicopter crash alongside four others. And on the international scene, President Buhari assent to agreement on the transfer of sentenced persons between Nigeria and the government of Macau. Welcome to Standard Voice Television News. I am Mosa Joy Onyoza. Now the news in full. President Muhammadu Buhari has commended Governor Belo Matawale Maradun for the return of peace to Zanfara State in a very short period of time, just as the Federal University Kuso also honored him with a special award of excellence. President Buhari, who spoke as a visitor to the maiden convocation ceremony of the Federal University Guso through Professor Hafiz Abubakar, also said the situation in Zamfara is worth emulating by other states who face similar challenges. During the occasion, the Chancellor of the University, who was just inaugurated at the occasion, His Royal Highness Eziogu Eha Elechi, and Izuoha of Ihora also commended the Zanfara State Government for being a good and hospitable host to the university. Similarly, the Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Garoba Magaji, said that only God can reward the governor for his immense support to the university. The university celebrates its maiden combined convocation for the 2017 stroke 2018 and 2018 stroke 2019 academic sessions and was attended by dignitaries including the Zanfra State Governor Belo Mohamed Matawale Maradun. Other dignitaries include the Sultan of Sokoto Alahaji Saad Abubakar, the Emir of Kano State Alahaji Mohamedou Sanusi, Emirs of Zanfra State led by Emir of Kano Guso Alahaji Ibrahim Belo. Former Governor of Zamfara State, Alahaji Mahmoud Aliu Shinkafi, among others. The Emir of Kano State, Alahaji Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, says polygamy is the root cause of poverty in northern Nigeria. According to the Emir, the culture of marrying more than one wife by those who cannot even properly take care of one wife and producing many children was the main reason why the northern region would continue to remain backward and poor. Alahaji Sanusi Lamido has warned that unless the people of the north change their culture, they would continue to be backward. The Emir, according to a report by the Punch newspaper, made a comment in Guso's and Fra State on Friday while presenting a paper. He said there are people who could not afford to feed one wife but are ready to marry fair wife and have more children than they cannot field, talk less of paying for their school fees. The Emir added that the poverty level of the North is 80%, while in the South 20%, simply because of the culture of marrying many wives and producing many children who at the end are left on the street to beg for what to eat. He said the issue of drug abuse, Boko Haram, banditry and unemployment would be nothing compared to what we'll be dealing with in the next 20 or 30 years. <coughs> it is indeed a great honor for me to have been invited to chair this occasion. And I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity to be here. And I wish us all a very successful evening. 
I see from the program I'm supposed to make remarks at the beginning and remarks at the end, and we're already short of time. I would like to defer any remarks I have to after the lecture for two reasons. Uh, first, because I think we came here primarily to listen to Dr. Osman Bugaji and we should give him as much time as possible. <coughs> And Federal Capital Territory High Court in Meitama has convicted Mariam Sander of killing her husband, Biliamin Ubelu. The judge has, however, stood down the matter for five minutes following the drama that ensued after the conviction was passed. Mariam Sander fled the dock immediately the judge convicted her. However, court officials and prison officials dragged her back into the dock. The judge was forced to rise after several women start wailing in the courtroom. One of them who made attempt to approach Miriam was ordered to be taken away by the judge. Justice Yusuf Halidu rose for five minutes to return for sentencing. As at the time of filing this report, Miriam is still wailing and shouting while efforts are being made by her family and lawyers to console her. Accordingly, I have sentenced Mariam Sander to death by hanging until she dies. This I have done. Believe Meanwhile, the Mariam Sander sentence has generated row across the country. Our reporters took to the street of Gusto Zanfara State to take the pulse of the people. My opinion is I think she deserved the punishment, a death penalty, because as a woman, I don't think she has any right to kill her husband for doing something she thinks is bad. And it's also a lesson to other women that killing their husband is not just their right because they think he has done something bad to them. It's not their right. Well, to me, I feel it is the right thing. Like, she needs to die. Because I don't see why a woman has to kill her husband. Even if, if for any reason, you shouldn't kill your husband. So for the first she kill her husband, she also has to die. On the other hand, Dahiru Sumaila Mafara spoke to Barista Suraju Garoba Guso in our studio for the implication of the judgment on Mariam. Uh, Barista Suraju, what is the implication of this judgment? As you said, the implication of this uh, judgment includes, but not limited to the following. Number one, she lost some of her fundamental rights which are enshrined in our 1999 constitution. For instance, we have right to life. Now she lost that fundamental right. The session provides that nobody's life should be taken unless or until uh, by an order of competent court. So now she was sentenced to this by the court. So she lost that, light, uh, that right by implication. Secondly, she lost her right to liberty. Uh, now her liberty has been restricted. She also lost her right of movement. Each and every Nigerian has the right to move from one state to another one place to another, in fact, from one country to another country. Now she lost that right. So by implication, this year she lost all these uh, rights. So I think these are the rights I could remember. Yeah. Oh, okay. Transparency International, the world's foremost coalition against corruption, has said that the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Mr. Abu Bakr Malami frustrated high profile cases since he assumed office in 2015 and has not been at the forefront of anti corruption fight. The coalition alleged that Malami had not prosecuted any corruption case in about five years he had been in office, but had watered down cases that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, was investigating that were before the court. TI's contact person in Nigeria, Mr. Awal Musa, made the allegation in an interview with This Day on Friday defending the 2019 Corruption Perception Index. 
TI's annual publication that measures corruption in 180 countries and territories. The CPI, which the Civil Society Legislative Advocacy Center, TI's chapter in Nigeria, released on Thursday revealed that Nigeria scored 26 out of 100 points in the 2019 CPI, falling back by one point when compared with the 2018 report. In a country comparison, the CPI revealed that Nigeria ranks 146 out of 180 countries, two places down compared to 2018 results. While the index does not show real incidences of corruption, it is a reliable indication of the perception of the Nigerian public and international community about the state of corruption in the country. Disappointed at the Nigerians' rating on TI's corruption index, the Attorney General condemned the 2019 CPI that placed the country at 146 out of the 180 countries and territories globally, noting that there was no evidence to back the country's rating. In a statement by its acting spokesman, Mr. Tony Uriladi, on Friday, also the EFCC faulted Nigerians' poor rating on the index, questioning the bogus and ambiguous criteria TI used to arrive at what it called a jundized and illogical rating. But in a telephone conversation with this day, Awal challenged the Attorney General to present one corruption case he had prosecuted since he assumed office in 2015, noting that Malame in four good years had not prosecuted any corruption case. Rather, TI's counterperson I like that the Attorney General watered down corruption cases that the EFCC had been investigating before Malami assumed office, or the graft cases that had been filed at the court before he took over as the Justice Minister. Citing different corruption cases, the AGF allegedly frustrated. Awal explained how Malami prevailed on President Muhammadu Buhari to drop the Malabu oil scandal at the initial stage. He misled the president that there was no case in the Malabu oil deal contrary to the position of the EFCC. That is why the case did not go on for a very long time until the EFCC insisted on prosecuting the case. The Malabu oil scandal has been swept under the carpet. He also explained how the AGF withdrew the corruption case against former Gombe State Governor and a chieftain of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Senator Danjumo Goje, in 2019 after Goje stepped down to contest the election of the President of the Senate. He alleged that the Attorney General applied for the withdrawal of the charges, even though ELCC had filed 25 billion Naira corruption charges against Goje alongside a former executive chairman of Gombe State Universal Basic Education Board, Mr. Aliu El Nafati. Malam Awa also explained how Malam stopped the prosecution of former Senate President Dr. Bukola Saraki for allegedly forging the Senate rules to conduct the election of principal officers. Since 2015, the Attorney General had been in office. Awa claimed that he has not gone to court to prosecute any corruption case. Rather, he has watered down corruption charges in court all those under investigation of the EFCC. Nigeria Center for Disease Control has said Lassa fever cases have been reported in 11 states with 29 deaths and 195 cases. The Director General NCDC Dr. Ike Ihekwezu confirmed the current figure as of Friday, January 24, 2020. Mr. Ikwezu said out of the confirmed cases, 89% were from Ondo, Edo, and Ebony states. The NCDC board said that the increased number of cases at this time of the year was not unusual due to ecological factors. He said that in response to the increasing number of the Lassa fever cases across the state, the NCDC activated a National Emergency Operations Center on Friday to coordinate response activities. Mr. Ihe Kwezu said that the EOC includes representatives from the National Emergency Management Agency, Federal Ministry of Agriculture, Rural Development, 
Federal Ministry of Environment, World Health Organization, UNICEF, U.S. Centers for Disease Control, and other partners. He said the NCDC would continue to support states in strengthening their preparedness and response capacity. He added that over the last three weeks, NCDC had deployed rapid response teams to support five of the affected states. According to him, it will ensure prompt case management and other response activities in order to reduce the number of deaths. The Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAMB, has halted the ongoing admission of students at the University of Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory, due to irregularities. In its latest investigation on the admission process of the university, JAMB found out that the new management under the Vice Chancellor, Professor Abdurashid Naala, had altered the situation. Checks by Economic Confidential indicated that upon resumption of office a few months ago, the new VC jettisoned the committee of the university and allegedly contracted the process out, which is alien to the institution. The development caught the attention of JAMB, who in turn informed the university to halt the 2019-2020 admission process, which did not meet up with its guidelines of uploading all admissions on the Central Admission Processing Unit. Further investigations revealed that university regulations on admission provided that admissions of students should be handled by the committee on admission headed by a chairman. The investigation also showed that the admission acceptance fee of newly admitted students, which is 4,500 naira as before, was now 30,000 naira. The institution, which never charged fees for the collection of original certificates after graduation, now charged 30,000 naira per person for such. The university management under the new leadership also allegedly reversed the existing Senate decision on examination results. The current rule, which has not been ratified by the Senate, orders lecturers to turn in results 10 days at the end of each semester examination and other academic staff have said won't be complied with. The Office of the VC is said to have also taken over the issuance of coupons for the about 6,000 bed spaces in student hostels. Efforts to contact the VC Chancellor through phone calls and text messages failed, but the university spokesperson Habib Yakub said that the allegations were unfounded, adding that those making the claims had things to hide. Head of Media and Information, JAM, Dr. Fabian Benjamin, confirmed the development stating that the organization had the mandate to correct any lapses detected in any admission process of any university. The President, Major General Muhammad Buhari, retired, has ordered the deployment of fighter jets against kidnappers, bandits, and cattle rustlers said to be terrorizing communities in Niger State. The communities are situated around the Dogon Gona forest, which serves as a hideout for the attackers. According to a state house statement by Buhari spokesman Mr. Garoba Shehu, the forest stretches from Nanja through Kadna to Zamfara State. The presidency observed that the attackers had claimed many lives, saying Buhari saw the development as a disaster for the nation. It added that the deployment of air power was to assist the police and troops to contain the bandits. It said in line with this directive, the Nigerian Air Force is setting up refueling facilities in Mina, Niger State, to support the aircraft operations, giving assurance that gave the improved weather conditions a major exercise to visually acquire targets and launch attack will soon follow. The presidency stated further that the Niger State Police Command also supported the air power because of the difficult terrain of the affected areas that did not allow for easy access by ground operations. The statement added that the Police Command in Niger State has equally given assurance that the planned dedicated air raid to complement the police helicopter gun ship operation remained the best approach given the lack of motorized road in the area constantly under attack.
We'll be right back after this short commercial break. Stay tuned. I'm fanning Gary, Idan Harbaba was a man life here. Me teach it, I didn't buy the baby islands. Me teach it, I want it on my inch. Me, I'm fanning Karatu, Idan Harbaba. Me, I'm fanning Mahim Manchins that eh, Idan Babu Roman Democratia. Me, I'm fanning Tari, Idan Harbaba as a mother seated at Kinsala. It has some para, they are ten takas and tea about Shawa. Gashukumas and Senna no matter cast one. She wouldn't do Kuwaki showers. Amma say Abu was a Katuya. Masaka and Chains, the Zara Anga Mutsunas and Para, then I know what I'm a sipa the Kobala. She naked the Sua's got a mutter. By E. Sukadinizua, Engari, Sukafaro Kudua, Telouch, the Tashan Hankali, Sukayawa, Gashitahamu may husky. Tada, what I do. San no mutter and Zampara, say Makatashis, Makakam, Adoi, the two bagger of Wangizum. Sukua Allah answer at the Am, say Kaumana, Matawa Lamara, do the Maki as a Malapia. Do dental out, do the macarieta, the masio. May you come, Madame Allah, make you some mutter. You come a name on community, Madame Kansama. Teaching and can look at you. Say that she had a woman that has Kansama. How much happier to take it down? One now, she akin to Peter Shubaba. Tell me, Bamala, let's see. My Kachiba, but I'll unlock a car in Manaza or Pongomna, Matawa, and Maradi. I'll lock my car, Masalapia. I'll lock my car at Okaka. Kone, the government in jail is on fire. Kalkashin Jagoran Chimbello Mahamad Matsawa Lamaradun, M O N, Kumabari Dan Kasarahausa. Welcome back on business. Jamima Samuel has small detail. Thank you. Welcome to business decks. The federal government has acquired six aircraft for Nigerian College of Aviation Technology. The Minister of Aviation, Captain Hadi Sirika, made the announcement on Twitter through his handle. Captain Sirika said the aircraft would be delivered in the next three weeks. He also stated that this was part of the efforts to catch up with technology and in line with the aviation map road. The minister said the federal government's effort had earned NCAT the status of International Civil Aviation Organization Regional Training Center of Excellence. Director of NCAT, Captain Mohammed Abdul Salam, had last year said the college had placed orders for six DA-40 aircraft. He said the new aircraft would enhance NCAT's training capacity. He noted that with the delivery of the aircraft, the college would also place order for another batch of aircraft. He said the college would be ordering aircraft in batches until the delivery of 20 aircraft. Captain Abdul Salam added that in keeping up with this advancement, the college is also procuring new equipment so that the engineers and pilots, air traffic controllers and others, by the time they come out, they are already trained in the use of all these facilities. He said the NCAT bill for the amendment of the act that set up the college was before the National Assembly, adding that its passage would help the college to assess tertiary education trust fund to address some infrastructures and staff training needs. And that's all we have on Business Deck today. I am Jamama Samuel. And on sports, Sufyan Abubakar has more detail. Welcome to Standard Voice Television Sports Room. My name is Abu Sufyan Abubakar, and as usual, I bring the sports updates. It's a tragic news as the whole world mourns the death of former basketball legend Kobe Bryant. The NBA legend died on Sunday in a helicopter crash in southern Los Angeles, celebrity website TMZ reported, saying nine people are confirmed dead in the incident. The crash happened near Calabasas in California, about 30 miles northwest of downtown Los Angeles on Sunday. Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department confirms nine people were on board a helicopter. No victims survived. Authorities have not identified the victims, but ABC News sources confirmed Brian and his daughter, Gianna, were among those killed. Federal Aviation Administration spokesperson Alan Kedzner said it was a serious case S-76 and it was not known what caused the crash. Los Angeles County Sheriff Alex Villanueva says his department helicopters were grounded due to weather in the area on Sunday. Conditions were extremely foggy when Brian's helicopter went down. Brian lived south of Los Angeles in coastal Orange County for much of his adult life, and he often used helicopters to save time and avoid Southern California's notorious traffic. Even as a player, he often traveled to practices and games by helicopter, and he kept up that practice after retirement as he attended to his business's ventures. 
as he attended to his business ventures. Brian got a start just outside Philadelphia at Lower Merion High School. He was drafted to the NBA out of the Lower Merion in 1996 and spent his entire 20-year career with Los Angeles Lakers, winning five NBA championships. He was awarded NBA MVP in 2008 and NBA Finals MVP in 2009 and 2010. And in the Nigerian Premier League, Lobby Stars defeated Nasara United 2-1 in Makodi yesterday to regain the top spot of the Nigerian Premier League from Pratu United, who are now second with the Rivers in third position. The NPFL Match Day 17 fixtures also witnessed Sunshine Stars return to the top four place from where they were temporarily dislodged by the Dakar FC. Ember, who did not feature in the domestic scene this weekend, together with Adama United, who moved up two spots from the base, Jigawa Golden Stars and Nasara United complete the bottom four. Rivers United also endured a disappointing evening as they played out a 0-0 draw with Wiki Tories in Port Harcourt. In Akure, Sunshine Stars and Kano Pillars battled to a 2-2 draw in a thrilling encounter. Anthony Omaka gave Pillars the lead 9 minutes before the break, while Awalo Ali leveled for Pillars in 49th minute. At Umahia Township Stadium, Abia Warriors defeated Wari Wolves one goal to nil courtesy of Okun or top 90th minute strike. Aqua United ate out Heartland 31 at the Goswell Akpabio Stadium in Uyo. Heartland took the lead through Chikwe Meka Obiyama in the 15th minute, but the home team rallied back through goals from Indifreki F. Young, who had a brace, and Akarandat Oruk. Tasi Lowell scored the winning goal in third minute at Katsina United, as Katsina United pip FC Ifanyu Uba 1-0 at the Muhammad Diko Stadium. And that's all we have on sports today. Back to the new studio. And on the international scene. <music> President Mohammed Buhari has assented to the instrument of ratification of the agreement on the transfer of sentenced persons between the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the government of the Macau Special Administrative Region of the People's Republic of China. This is sequel to the Federal Executive Council conclusion of the August 4th, of the August 1st, 2018, which approved and directed the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice to prepare the instrument of ratification of the above agreement for the President's signature. President Buhari's assent formally executes the agreement. That has been the news from Standard Voice Television. To end the news, a quick look at the major headlines. President Mohamed Buhari advised state governors to adopt Matawale strategy to tackle insecurity. Emir of Kano says polygamy is a cause of backwardness in northern Nigeria. An FCT High Court in Meitama has convicted Mariam Sander of killing her husband, Filiaminu Bello, on business. Aviation College gets six new aircraft. On sports, basketball legend Cole Bryant killed in helicopter crash along four others. And on the international scene, President Buhari assent to agreement on the transfer of sentence persons between Nigeria and the government of the Macau. Thanks for watching. I still remain Musa Joy Onyoda. Stay tuned.